In response to my last video about the Vice 3.6 Commodore 64 emulator, Pietro Franciscini comments, I like to make basic programs and I would like to print the program list to make corrections or just to have a hard physical copy of my programs. Is there a video, or are you planning to make one, on how to print from Vice? Hmm. Good question. Greetings, it's JC at Basic Bytes. Happy New Year to everyone. And you know, I wasn't going to do another video on Vice Emulator quite this soon, but my last video on the release of the new Vice 3.6 right at the end of 2021 got a great initial response, which I thank you all very much for. And that combined with a viewer comment asking how to print hard copies of program listings from the emulator, which is something that I've dabbled with in the past and just happened to want to investigate further anyhow. Today's demonstration is being done in Vice 3.6 running on Windows 10. However, I assume that other platforms will work in a similar manner, if not exactly the same manner. For purposes of this demonstration, we are mainly going to be sticking with the theme of printing hard copy listings of basic programs, as that happens to be my own number one use for the actual Commodore printers that I own, and I very much agree with the viewer's comment on how handy it can be to have a hard copy to make notes on when you are doing program corrections or refactoring. With that said, the settings that I will show you configure your emulator with a generic Commodore graphics printer, which should work just as well whether you are running off text or firing up an old copy of PrintShop to run off bitmap graphics on a modern laser printer. The first thing you'll want to do is open your printer settings under Peripheral Devices. Here we have tabs for printer 4, 5, 6, and 7, as well as a user port connected printer. 4 through 7 correspond to device numbers 4 through 7. Printer number 4 is the one that we will be focusing on here. Device number 4 is essentially to Commodore printers what device number 8 is to Commodore disk drives. In other words, even though this peripheral can have a range of device numbers, various pieces of hardware and software have chosen to hard code that value. And for a printer, the assumed value is device number 4, just as for a disk drive, it is device number 8. Is this good design practice? Absolutely not, but it is the reality of the situation. One of the interesting things about Vice is that it supports real device access, presumably even using an actual Commodore printer, if you have the appropriate adapters to plug that into your PC. Additionally, you can send output directly to printer ports such as LPT1 and LPT2. That is not the route we will be taking here, as it calls into question your specific printer hardware and drivers. Rather, we will be running our print jobs as graphics with one bitmap image per page. These can then be printed on the printer of your choice using the software of your choice and give you a digital copy to boot. To configure this, you want to select File System Access as your emulation type, Graphics as your output mode, and leave Output Device on number one, which corresponds to this first text box down here. The default value of viceprint.out is what the base name of your created bitmap images will be. You furthermore want to select Enable IEC Device, which, to be clear, does not mean you have an actual physical IEC device plugged into your PC. All this simply means is that you are enabling this printer device number 4 in the emulator, otherwise the emulator will not recognize that you have a device on this device number. 
Last but not least, you need to select your driver, and for this you are either going to want the Commodore MPS-803 or the Star Micronics NL-10. As a default, assuming that you are just going to leave this printer configured in VICE, I will suggest going with the Commodore MPS-803. From a driver standpoint, the MPS-803 is your vanilla, generic Commodore graphics printer, and it is functionally identical to the MPS-801 as well as the VIC-1525, which came before it. I will be demonstrating both of these drivers in this video so that you can select the one that best suits your needs, but let's go with the MPS-803 for starters. Okay, time to print a program listing, and for this I have loaded up side one of issue number one of Lodestar magazine. And for purposes of our demonstration, we are simply going to use the first program on the disk. As it turns out, when you load star from Lodestar, you load the Lodestar loader. <laughs> and that is in fact exactly what this is. It's a short basic program that uh, simply displays the opening screen and some credits and has the user press keys before the menu system is loaded, but it isn't too short. It's longer than a single page, and thus we'll be able to take a look at what multi-page printing looks like. Now, because I don't want to type all of the basic commands necessary to send a listing to the printer twice in this video, I'm going to take an extreme shortcut on this first example, and all I'm going to do is run the plist command, which is going to take care of doing the whole thing for me. The reason why I have access to this command is because I am presently using the Final Cartridge 3. Don't program without it. And so we simply run plist, and we wait for a moment, and there you have it, the print job is already done, and that was not in any way sped up, because with the emulated printer, we are not waiting for an actual printer mechanism, and program listing runs extremely fast compared to actual hardware. Another great printer command that the Final Cartridge 3 makes available is the pdir, which lists the directory of the presently inserted disk to the printer, and since we are here anyway, I'm going to add that to our print job right now. Contrary to what you may expect, the pdir command actually takes a little bit longer to complete sometimes than the plist command. The reason for this is that the final cartridge 3 code needs to open a channel to the 1541 disk drive to request the directory data that is going to be printed, and thus the delay is not waiting on the printer, but rather the communication between the two microprocessors. At this juncture, we can see our virtual print job in progress here in the bin subfolder of wherever you put your vice installation with the files vice printout 1 and 2 dot bitmap. Notice that the second bitmap file has a file size of 0 kilobytes, and this is because the emulator only flushes out a page to disk when it is full or, seemingly, when the emulator is closed, which I will do right now. There. Notice that the file size of the second file upon closing vice went to 39 kilobytes, now matching the size of the first page. Although bitmap is a lossless, uncompressed file format, the small file size here is due in part to the fact that these files use a simple 1-bit color palette being black and white. 
By today's standards, they are also relatively small in their dimensions, being 480 pixels wide. However, this is an exact one-to-one -one correlation with the actual dot resolution of the MPS-803 printer, which printed 80 characters on a line using a horizontal width of six dots per character. These bitmaps can of course be compressed even smaller if you convert them to PNG for sharing on the modern day web, for example, provided that your graphic software is intelligent enough to preserve the one-bit color palette rather than converting them to RGB. And here we see the results of our print job with page one and page two, with the second page including the directory of the Lodestar disk as expected. Zooming into double size, note that the image contains special Petsky graphics characters as well as reverse text in exactly the same fashion as you would expect to see it if this had been printed on an actual MPS 803. Note as well that the area of the image only accounts for the printable area of the page, so you will need to allow for your own margins when you are sending this image to an actual printer. For our second demonstration, we are now switching over to the Star Micronics NL10. For consistency, we have once again loaded Star from Lodestar, but for the benefit of those who have not yet joined the final Club 3, I will herein go through the manual basic commands that are necessary in order to list a program to the printer. First, we are going to open channel 4 to device number 4. Next, we are going to divert the computer's output from the console to device 4. Notice that after we ran that command, we did not get a ready prompt, and that's because it has just been sent to device 4. And if we had a physical printer attached to our Commodore 64 at this juncture, we would have just heard the printhead zip across the page. Now that output has been diverted, we can simply list our program, and it gets sent to device 4. This predictably completes just as fast as the plist command for reasons already mentioned. There's one final step, and that is that we need to unlisten the printer from the computer. In order to do that, we issue a print number sign command to device 4. This sends a blank line to the printer, but part of this particular command is that it cleanly closes off communication with the printer. Notice we now have our ready prompt back, so the printer has been unlistened. Finally, we issue the close command for channel 4, which is good practice as you can only have a limited number of channels open at one time. And that cleanly finishes off our dialogue with the printer. Looking once again at the bin folder, we see our new print job in progress, and the first thing that is very important to note is that it is using the exact same file names as our previous print job. If you do not rename or otherwise move out each print job after it is complete, the subsequent one will simply overwrite it. The other thing of note here is, of course, the file size. We now see that page 1 is sitting at 942 kilobytes, and this is because the NL10 driver doesn't print your pages at 60 dpi, but rather at 300 dpi. As with our previous print job, the second page, which is still not yet full, is zero kilobytes, having not been flushed out to disk, and to do so, I will close the emulator right now.
Taking a look at this portion of the first page of our new print job, which I have scaled down to half size in order to get it to reasonably fit within the video, we immediately notice that a dot matrix dot pattern is being emulated here as each dot on this image is certainly larger than a single pixel. Moreover, and potentially of great interest to those who are running program listings, note that in lines such as 7 and 100, control characters for things such as clearing the screen, changing the color, or cursoring down are not printed as their Petsky character representations as you would see and did see in the printout from the MPS 803, but rather are being printed as descriptions of the key presses that are used to generate those codes. If you are printing program listings for the purposes of debugging or long-term archival storage, this may be an option that you wish to consider as it makes the intention of each line of code quite evident. But wait, there's more. This third and final demonstration will show that printing bitmaps works just as well as printing text. This, of course, is the final screen of the Basic Bytes short intro, which is written in BASIC and is also animated on the Commodore 64's high resolution screen. I will now press Alt-Z, which will trigger the freeze button on the final cartridge 3. Now we go over to the Print menu and activate the Settings option. The flashing border color simply means that it is processing the image that is on the screen currently, and we get this large screen of settings, which I will take no time to explain because all of the default settings are correct for the MPS 803. All we need to do is hit the print button. Now be advised that printing bitmaps does take a full minute to two, and this has nothing to do with waiting for the printer so much as the fact that all of the CPU processing of the image is still occurring at the standard stock 1 megahertz speed, and so if you are printing a bitmap, it may be a good time to kick your emulator into warp mode to quickly get past it. And for anyone who doubted that the print job worked well, here is your evidence in black and white. If you found this interesting or entertaining, please like and subscribe to Basic Bytes for more. Also, if you're interested in finding out more about a Commodore printer that is terrible for bitmaps, but one of the best when it comes to printing program listings, check out my peek inside the Commodore MPS 802. Thank you for watching.